जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वाला भिवार जय गोपी जन वाला भिवार यशोरानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोरानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन या मन तीरावन चारी या मन तीरावन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय मृष्णपाद परमहंस श्रीमदीता Some of it, but the wind is jai. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय
On this 25th day of January 2022 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in the introduction, page 25. And then we read one sentence before the, end, the paragraph beginning, how is this possible? And then we'll proceed from there. Therefore, we have to practice remembering the Lord always. 24 hours a day by chanting his names and molding our life's activities in such a way that we can remember him always. How is this possible? The Acharyas give the following example. If a married woman is attached to another man, or if a man has an attachment for a woman other than his wife, then the attachment is to be considered very strong. One with such an attachment is always thinking of the loved one. The wife who is thinking of her lover is always thinking of meeting him, even while she is carrying out her household duties, uh, household chores. Okay, now, can you guys move over here? Because that's the lady section, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry, we have so few ladies that sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah, if you can just... Yeah, that would be cool. If you can move over here, we'll be good. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. I should have told you before. Okay, so she's carrying out her chores very carefully. In fact, she carries out her household work even more carefully so her husband will not suspect her attachment. We are on page 25, about three-quarters of the way down. Similarly, we should always remember the Supreme Lover, Sri Krishna, and at the same time perform our material duties very nicely. A strong sense of love is required here. If we have a strong sense of love for the Supreme Lord, then we can discharge our duty and at the same time remember him. But we have to develop that sense of love. Arjun, for instance, was always thinking of Krishna. He was the constant companion of Krishna, and at the same time, he was a warrior. Krishna did not advise him to give up fighting and go to the forest to meditate. When Lord Krishna delineates the yoga system to Arjun, Arjun says that the practice of this system is not possible for him. Arjun of Acha. So, Adibo. So we can chant this. I'll chant one line. You can repeat. Arjuna Vacha, Yoyam Yoga Straya Prokta, Samyena Madhusudana, Etasyaham Napashyami, Chanchalot Patstitim Stidham. Top of page 26. Arjuna said, O Madhusudan, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to me, for the mind is restless and unsteady. Um, Bhagavad Gita 6.33 But the Lord says, Yoginam apisarvesham Madgatinam taratmana Shadhavan bhatati yo maam Sameyukta tamomataha of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, is the most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. Bhagavad Gita 647. So one who thinks of the Supreme Lord always is the greatest yogi, the supermost jnani, and the greatest devotee at the same time. The Lord further tells Arjun that as a chatriya, he cannot give up his fighting. But if Arjun fights remembering Krishna, then he will be able to remember Krishna at the time of death. But one must be completely surrendered in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Om jnana timarandasya jnanandana shalakya chakshu unmiditam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Sri Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, Srila Prabhupada is continuing with the theme of cultivating remembrance of Krishna. Uh, the, if we go back to page 23, we'll find that he quotes this one verse twice in a matter of uh, a couple of paragraphs here. Yang yang vabi smarang bhavam chata chante kalevanam tamtame vaiti konte yasadatat bhava bhavitaha, which is the uh, central principle of what you say. Vedic wisdom, and that is that 
we are, we, that this body that we have, that we're, uh, that we're occupying now, is one of many. Even in this lifetime, it's one of many. If we think back, we had a little child body, a little baby body, we probably forget. I can remember back about five. I don't know how far you can remember, but there's a certain point where you can remember. But, you, but your mother will tell you, you have little pictures even before that. So the body's constantly changing, a little baby, and then you go to school, and you gradually grow up, you're adolescent, a youth, you know, and then gradually you move into middle age, old age, and you're finished. And uh, so that's true for everybody, and it's true for every body. In other words, every species goes through that. There's birth, there's growth, there's sustenance, there's some byproducts, offspring maybe, dwindling, invalidity, and finished. And so that's been going on since time immemorial. It's described how we, we never were born, Najayate, and and we never die. But we do occupy this series of bodies, and we forget. I don't think anyone here, unless maybe you're an exception, you can remember your past life or lives. But we know from the, from the Vedic scripture, and it makes perfect sense, that we had some other life, and we're now in this life, and we're preparing for the next one. And so Srila Prabhupada quotes from Bhagavad Gita here, this central principle, whatever is the dominant thought at the time of your death, that's going to determine what body you inhabit. Now, during the lifetime, we cultivate certain thoughts, certain desires, certain attachments, and that, all of those impressions and things, they, they add up to make our dominant thought, our dominant state of mind. It's called the bhava, yang yang vapi smarang bhavam. That will determine our next life. Now, there's another factor here, and that is that there's what you do, your karma, this, the law of karma. And that that's also involves your consciousness, obviously. If you cultivate a vicious attitude, you you know try to exploit people, and you're very cruel. That's going to be part of your main part of your mentality when you leave, and you could very well lose the human form of life, which Krishna says is the greatest danger in the second chapter. We want to try to avoid that danger at all costs. So the now so the question comes now if we if we have faith in this science, and this is a big thing, a big if. Because most people don't. I mean, it's in the modern world, in the Western world anyway. Most people, I think many people in America, although it's decreasing, by the way, this percentage of people who are religious who say, yes, I belong to religion, dominant religion was always Christianity and so forth. But it's decreasing as time goes on. That's what I've read. But the idea is you come into being when you're born. I mean, isn't this the philosophy? And you have one shot if you, if you surrender to the, the acharya, then you know you can go to heaven forever. Otherwise, you go to the other place forever. But that's not the philosophy. There's no forever punishment for the soul. It may be a long time, but you always get another chance. You are, Krishna is, is merciful. After all, he, he, he describes in the 14th chapter, I am the seed-giving father for every living being, every organism. Organism means, we learned in, in grade school, right? Some living being, you can see some, it's an insect, it's an animal, it's a bird. Wherever you see consciousness manifest, and that's an organism. And we're also one of those organisms. So wherever you see life, you know there's a soul. And that soul is part and parcel of God. We're children of God. And he never abandons us. So he's so bad, he or she is so bad. Eternal damnation. That's not in the philosophy. Is always coming up, coming up, another chance. But we have a responsibility to take that chance when we come to the human form of life to accept this philosophy and try to cultivate that consciousness by which we will not have to come back again. That's the basic principle. So therefore he quotes this verse twice. Now, in the passage we read today, uh, how is it possible? How is it possible to cultivate this, this remembrance? So Prabhupada gives this example that... Uh, because it's difficult. For most people, it's not, I mean, I was fortunate enough and some, you know, fortunate enough to be able to immerse oneself 100% in the environment of Krishna consciousness, in a temple, in an ashram. Prabhupada, out of his great effort and great mercy, he founded them, built them up, and, and he established them in America and all over the world now. 
So if someone is fortunate enough to have, to have that uh, ability, you can join and you can take on full time and it's, it's a full program. And then it's more, obviously, a little easier to always remember Krishna. The whole thing is built up. Even Prabhupada was saying at the beginning of the movement in 26 Second Avenue, my whole philosophy here is to cre uh, uh, create an institution where whatever you do in it is to remind you of Krishna. They were working on Back to Godhead, they were, of course, chanting Hare Krishna, and cooking for Krishna, cleaning the place, everything, you know, maintaining, whatever. So that helps you to remember, because, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not just cleaning the floor. I like to recount some of my experiences that stick out of my mind over this almost 50 years now I've been doing this. So I remember, I had, you know, it was the fir first year that I was in, in the temple uh, in Brooklyn, beautiful temple, and we had, a we had so many devotees that we had a maha cleanup every day. Everyone had their little section, a corner that they were going to clean, so it was feasible. So my duty was to wipe down the, the temple room. It was maybe three quarters as big as this temple room. But it, that meant hands and knees, you know, and I had a, 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 a cloth, and I was my, you know, a wet cloth, and I was going there. So while I'm doing that, the deities are there. The deities are open. <laughs> And the uh, music is playing. Uh, I remember go, uh, that, that it had just come out. Uh, we have this Govinda song, but there's more on the record there. And one is Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya. By, by the way, Srila Prabhupada authorized that bhajan to be sung during kirtan. Very few with that, but that's when he sang himself. So sometimes we can sing that. You see, on Sunday night, I hear that. So I'm, I'm, the music is playing, you know, and I'm chanting along, and I'm doing this, and I'm looking back, and there's the deities, seventh heaven, you know, <laughs> as I used to say, I didn't call it seventh heaven. But that was, I, I felt like I was the f most fortunate person in the world. Because I'm you know, doing this menial service, but uh, there's Krishna smiling behind me, and then I can, it becomes very feasible to absorb the mind. Even in this age, this is not a good age for, for certainly, uh, you know, meditative, dhyana, dhyana yoga, ashtanga yoga. Where are you going to go? You know, is anyone really going to go up to the Himalayas? Radhanath Swami did that, you know, in 68 or 5, whenever he went, you know, he was incredible. He actually did that, practiced, you know, yoga. It was very, very rare. And even if those who, do, who did do that, and this was the hippie days when people were searching, they eventually say, okay, I, I can only take so much of this. You know, they come back, and come back to their parents' house, go back to school, whatever. He didn't do that. He joined the Hare Krishnas. From there, he came back down to Delhi and he met Prabhupada, you know. So, very rare soul. So, uh, so Arjun is representing us. And he's, he's saying, as Prabhupada recounts here, I can't do this. I'm a, I'm a warrior, you know, I'm a family man. And uh, there's so many distractions. Chanchalam himana krishna pramati balabhadradham. I think many of us can relate to this verse. The mind is very flickering, going here and there. You're trying to chant, and so many thoughts are coming in. Uh, pramati, very powerful and obstinate. It's like trying to control the wind. Can you go out there? We don't have that much wind blowing here. But sometimes the wind blows. You know, I'm, I, I like to recount my days in Miami, right, in the, in the, in the line of the hurricanes. I spent six years there in the 80s working on a Bhagavatam. And it's, and it's, you know, you have to take it seriously. It can blow down your windows and, you know, pull you out to sea. So it's, it's extremely powerful, these natural forces. So what to do? How are we going to be yogis? You have to be a yogi. You have to have control of the senses and mind, and you have to be able to cultivate the, the, the remembrance of Krishna. How can we do that? So Krishna came as Lord Chaitanya. And he gave us this feasible, pro feasible process centered on the chanting of the holy name. And, and we, we learn from the Shastra, there's so many beautiful verses about what is this name of Krishna. I learned one recently. So Krishna is made of these two syllables, Krishna, you know? So he says, Krish means to attract, to pull. So this is all the attractive features of Krishna, the beauty, the pastime, the qualities, you know, the mercy, everything that's so attractive about Krishna, infinitely attractive if you let yourself be attracted. That's all in that one syllable, Krish. And what's the na? The na 
uh, is, uh, is na, is uh, the bliss, the happiness, the ecstasy that Krishna feels all the time and that we can also feel if we attune ourselves to his uh, desires and we join him in his, you know, the dance of love, is what Prabhupada says in one passage. So, but we have to become Krishna conscious and we have to practice because our, everything we are, the senses, the mind, the intelligence, all of it has been steeped in the modes of nature since time immemorial. So it takes discipline, it takes uh, practice in order to redirect our consciousness and our love. So that's what, that's what bhakti is. It's a very systematic process that was taught by Lord Chaitanya, who's Krishna himself, and taught to whom? Taught first and foremost to his chief disciples, like Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, who he directed to write books. There's a beautiful song, many, many of you have heard this, uh, eight verses about the Goswamis, written by uh, Srinivas Acharya. And one of the verses, we used to sing every night, we used to have nectar devotion class along with Bhagavad Gita class way back when. Maybe we'll reinstitute that someday soon. And uh, there's one verse at the beginning from this Goswamashika Prabhupada chose to put there. Nana Shastra Bhachara Naika Nipanosa Dharma Sangstapako Loka Nam Hitakadi no Tibuvane Manyosha Danyakaro Radha Krishna Padada Vinda Bhajananande Namataliko Vande Rupa Sanatana Raguya Goshi Jiva Go Palako. Now just a little little fillip of grammar. I know that we're going to have Sanskrit grammar, you all <laughs> go to sleep or leave. But uh, the AU ending, everything is A. One day Rupa Sanatana, now, Ruya Gao, Shijiva Go, Palagao. Now, in Prabhupada's Sanskrit, in Bengal, that Ao is pronounced O. So you think, one day Rupa Sanatana, now, Ruya Go, Shijiva Go, So why, where, where do we get all these dual? It's, that means dual. Three sets of two make six. So this is how he did it. One day Rupa Sanatana, I offer my base to Rupa and Sanatan. Uh, one day Rupa Sanatana, Ragu Yugo, a pair of Ragus, Raghunath Bhatta and Raghunath Das Goswami. And then Sri Jiva and Gopal, this makes up the six. So all the whole thing is like that. So what is he saying here? That these Goswamis, especially Rupa and Sanatan and Jiva Goswami, Gopal Bhatta also wrote the Hari Bhakti Vilas. Raghunath Bhatta didn't write. He read Bhagavatam. He was assigned to read. And uh, Raghunath Das wrote some you know, very important things too. So, but especially Rupa and Sanatana, they were expert, very expert at scrutinizingly studying all the panoply of Vedic literatures and extracting the essence and writing down the essential uh, books uh, directing us in the practice of bhakti. First and foremost is Bhakti Rasamana Sindhu, which Srila Prabhupada gave us as nectar of devotion. It tells you the, pra- the practice and the experience of bhakti. It gives you so, so many wonderful verses, uh, descriptions of the different rasas, the different... Ex- ex- I, I, I memorized one, in, 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 in several, but one of that sticks out in my mind. The Vatsalya Ras. This is unheard of in any other religion, that you can love God as a little child and have this, this mood of a parent, protective parent, and then, of course, forget that he's God. You have to forget that he's God. This little baby, you know, is crawling along. But the, but the love for a, of a mother for a child is the most intense love in the material world we see. You can imagine if that's directed toward Krishna. So one of the, one of the verses, it describes a, uh, a murti of Krishna that's probably there in uh, probably 100 million or 200 million homes in, in India. <laughs> Any Vaishnava home will have this. Little baby Krishna crawling along with his hand holding a little, little butter, right? <laughs> this is the verse for that. So listen to this. this, this is the art, the aesthetics of the Sanskrit. You may, you may. Kronata kanaka kinkani kalapam spidamukha mudrana nasika gramuktam kadata pindamani tapindamangre tanayam avekshana nanda nanda patni. Isn't that exquisite? Now here's what it means. Kwanita means sounding very sweetly. Just like we have ve namun kwananta madhavin. That kwananta means very beautiful music. You know, so the, the, the bells are tinkling very beautifully. What kind of bells is waist bells? They're gold. That kanak is gold. Kanak kanak kinkini. That's the waist bells. Kalapam, the string of waist bells. Kanak kanak kinkali kalapam. Smita mukam. His face is smiling very sweetly, without the teeth showing. That 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 gentle smile. You know, he's smiling back at his mother. His wife. Smita mukam. Ujjwala nasikagra muktam. And on the tip of his his nose is affixed an effulgent pearl. 
and that's all he's wearing. He's got the bells and the pearl. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and he's crawling toward his mother. With a, in his hand, he's carrying a, a, a fresh butter ball. And he's offering it to his mother. You know, so he's coming, <laughs> his mother. And, and so he, uh, when his mother sees him this way, it says, Nananda Nanda Patni. Her name is Nan Nanda Patni, the wife of Nanda Maharaj. Nananda means delighted. She's full of bliss. Ananda, Nanda, Nanda, you know, like that. So that's just one verse, meditating on this wonderful relationship. And, and the idea is you fill your mind with all of these thoughts and these verses and the service and everything. And eventually you come to the point of remembering Krishna always. And what's the advantage? That's told in the Bhagavatam near the very end. Do you want a book, Prabhu? You okay? So it says, this is, this is, sometimes one day I'll go through this, we don't have time now. But at the end of the Bhagavatam, in the, I think it's the 12th chapter of 13 in the 12th canto, it's near the very end. There's an eight verses describing the glories of hearing and chanting. And the last verse describes the benefit of cultivating this constant remembrance of Krishna's lotus feet. Avismati Krishna Badada Vindayo Chinot Yabadhani Chashantanoti Sattvas Shuddhim Padamatma Bhaktim Jnanam Chabhijnana Viraga Yuktam. So we can, if we can cultivate that constant remembrance of Krishna's lotus feet by chanting the holy name as much as possible, always. Uh, 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 that, here's the benefits. Chinot uh, Yabadhani. Everything inauspicious in your life is destroyed. And shang tanoti, all good fortune is given to you. Sham is in the, in the, uh, the na- one of the names of Shiva, is shang- Shankara, right? Shankara means he who causes good fortune for everyone who you know, worships him and worships Krishna. So shang tanoti, sattva the, the The existence becomes purified, your consciousness, everything about your life becomes purified. And paramatma bhakti, your bhakti, devotion, devotion and love for the supreme soul, Krishna, is nourished, of course. And characterized by knowledge, realized knowledge. There's jnan and vigyan. You know, I've heard, I've heard about, uh, here I am in San Diego, and I heard that in, uh, this is an example, um, uh, in, in Sprouts, they got a new shipment in of different varieties of honey from different flowers, organically grown, you know. A friend is, is, is telling me about that, you know. And it's, you know, it's they're, they're amazing, better than anything you've ever heard. So I've got some gyan now. I know, it's, I know where it is, I know what it is, I know the value, you know. And I can go there and see if I can get one or two jars, you know. But I don't have any big gyan. I haven't actually tasted the honey. But if I go and buy it and open it and offer it to Krishna and then taste it, that's big gyan. You see the difference? One is knowing about the, the facts and one is actually experiencing so that's the, that's the difference. We know, we may know I'm a soul, I was transmigrating, I know Krishna's God, I believe that. But unless we practice and, and purify our heart, we're not going to experience and feel the truth of that. So that's, uh, that's the idea. And of course, that constant remembrance will take you back to Godhead, as we've been reading, the dominant thought in your life. So that's what Prabhupada is, is saying here. And uh, it's, it's possible even in ordinary life, you know, one has to lead a, lead a pure life, but one has to work, do this and that. But if you develop enough feeling for Krishna, you can remember him even in the midst of your daily life. That's what we just read. Okay, any questions on this, some of these points? Yes, I have a question. All right, make it quick, Prabhu. Yes, uh, the, the, the quote uh, from, from the, ch- the paragraph you just read is, quote, Arjun, for instance, was always thinking of Krishna. He was the constant companion of Krishna, and at the same time, he was a warrior, end quote. So my question is based on uh, these two, uh, the, the word, this part of this quote, always thinking of Krishna. So my question is, how, how can I accommodate uh, this always thinking um, of Krishna by Arjun when I see that uh, in the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is not thinking always of Krishna, but Instead, he's thinking about saving the lives of the warriors who are placed in the opposite army, uh, 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 thinking about uh, stealing the throne of his brother. You'll be steered. Yeah. The, the <laughs> this, I, it doesn't say that he wasn't thinking of Krishna, but it says that he was defying Krishna. 
that's also thinking of Krishna. But but you're right that there that Arjun, uh, uh, you can say he's in Maya or that he appeared to be in Maya. That's the whole point, and that that allows the Bhagavad Gita to be spoken. If he didn't if he didn't refuse to fight, then what would be the context? So the the uh, the idea is that Ar- Arjun uh, was a, is of course a special case. He is an eternal associate of Krishna, and he's always thinking of Krishna. But Krishna put him into illusion. This is one way of understanding, and this is the way Prabhupada explains it all the time. He put him into illusion in Maya, when you say, so that the Bhagavad Gita could be spoken. So that the Bhagavad Gita could be spoken for our benefit. And, uh, and I, you know, I, it, it, I don't think he's acting. I mean, he's, 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 he's disconsolate, he drops his bow, you know. I think that really he was a feeling... Uh, that he that he uh, he, he couldn't he couldn't kill his, his his friends and especially Bhishma and Drona his teacher and the grandfather figure and all of the uh, uh, relatives because it was one big clan they were actually part of one clan the Pandavas was also part of the Kuru clan you know even though and this was uh, I find so amazing that they had tried to kill them in various ways there's that incredible story of the uh, the house of Lack. And at first we thought it was shellac. Some editor didn't know what the word was, L-A-Q, L-A-C. So he put shellac. But shellac is a liquid. How can you make a house of it? Anyway, it's lac, and it burns very easily, you know. <laughs> so they, uh, Dhritarajah said, oh, we have this nice house for you. I think the, the town, if anyone knows, where it was some distance away. You can go and live there very comfortably, you know. So they went. But before they did, Vidura warned them in a kind of a, 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 a riddle, you know, that watch out for that, that, that house, you know. And so they were helped in various ways. Vidura sent somebody. So they, dang, they dug a tunnel on the knees, they, and they were able to escape. Uh, and by providence arrangement, uh, a lady came and stayed in the house with her five sons, and it all burned up. And they thought that the lady and her five sons were Kunti and, and, uh, and the Pandavas. So they were, they were able to escape. But there they are in the, in the middle of the, the, the forest, they have no, you know, they're running, they're escaping. It was a very difficult time. So anyway, um, but after all of that, you know, and the, and the, the attempted at disrobing of Draupadi and all of the things, uh, still Arjun, ha- because he's compassionate, he's a, he's a soft-hearted Vaishnav, he didn't want to fight this war. He didn't want to see all, you know, all the all this killing is going to go on and then the women will be unprotected. and I'll be there. So he had all these arguments. But he was um, placed in that condition by Krishna, so that Krishna could then speak the Bhagavad Gita and Arjun would come out of that. And he'd come, at the end, he'd say, Kadashe yes, I will, I, I, my, my, now my heart is clear, my mind is clear, I understand my duty, and I'm going to fight the, the battle, despite all the, you know, what my gut reaction is, feelings. So that's, that's the, the answer, is that he was, uh, he was always thinking of Krishna, and he was the constant companion of Krishna, and uh, he, had, he had lost his nature, that karpanya dosho apahata sobhava, that my sobhava, which is to be a warrior, a devotee warrior, I've lost that. I'm not fighting. And so due to this miserly weakness, and so uh, please tell me, you know, I surrender to you as a guru, and then the whole Gita begins. All right, we're going to go on. Hari Bol, Prabhu. Hari Bol, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, okay. I think we're on top of 26 now. Is that right? Okay, Arjuna Bacha. Yo yam yoga straya prokta. Samena modusudana. Etasyaham na pushyami. Chanchalat vatsti team stedam. Arjuna said, this is near the latter part of the sixth chapter. O Madhusudan, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to me, for the mind is restless and unsteady. By Gita 633. But the Lord says at the end of the chapter, Yogi nama pisarve sham, Madgatin antaratmana, Shadhavan bhatati yo maam, Same yukta tamomataha, of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, is the most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. Bhagavad Gita 647. 
So one who thinks of the Supreme Lord always is the greatest yogi, the supermost jnani, and the greatest devotee at the same time. The Lord further tells Arjun that as a chatra he cannot give up his fighting, but if Arjun fights remembering Krishna, then he will be able to rem remember Krishna at the time of death. But one must be completely surrendered in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. We work not with our body, actually, but with our mind and intelligence. So if the intelligence and the mind are always engaged in the thought of the Supreme Lord, then naturally the senses are also engaged in his service. Superficially, at least, the activities of the senses remain the same, but the consciousness is changed. The Bhagavad Gita teaches one how to absorb the mind and intelligence in the thought of the Lord. Such absorption will enable one to transfer himself to the kingdom of the Lord, if the mind is engaged in Krishna's service, then the senses are automatically engaged in his service. This is the art, and this is also the secret of the Bhagavad Gita, total absorption in the thought of Krishna, of Sri Krishna. Modern man has struggled very hard to reach the moon, but he has not tried very hard to elevate himself spiritually. If one has 50 years of life ahead of him, he should engage that brief time in cultivating this practice of remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This practice is the devotional process. Shabanam kirtanam vishno Smadanam parasevanam Archanam bandanam dasyam Sakyam atmani vedanam Shimad Bhagavatam 7.5.23 Okay, for extra credit, who spoke that verse? Who said? Did you? Govinda? Yes. Pallad Bharaj is speaking this to who? Govinda. His father. Yeah, that's pretty neutral. Hiranyakashipu, the biggest demon in the universe. <laughs> he, I'm sorry? Best of, the demons. Best of the demons. And this is like the, the archetypal speaking truth to power, you know. <laughs> So he fearlessly outlined, you know, the nine processes of devotional service to his father, who was an arch enemy of, of Vishnu. These nine processes, of which these, okay, so Prabhupada doesn't run through, I'll just run through. So hearing about Krishna is the first and foremost. Hearing and then repeating, chanting, kirtanam, about Vishnu, not about anyone else. Smaranam, which naturally leads to remembrance. Padasevanam, serving the lotus feet. Archanam, worshipping deity on the altar. Vandanam, bowing down and praying. Dasyam, serving. Sakyam, making a friendship. And Atmani Vedanam, surrendering everything. These nine processes of which the easiest is Shravanam, hearing the Bhagavad Gita from the realized person, will turn one to the thought of the Supreme Being. This will lead to remembering the Supreme Lord and will enable one upon leaving the body to attain a spiritual body which is just fit for association with the Supreme Lord. The Lord further uh, says, Abhyasi Yoga Yuktena Chaitasa na nigamina Padamam Pudasham Divyam Yati Purtan Chintayan He who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Arjun, is sure to reach me. Bhagavad Gita 8 8. This is not a very difficult process. However, one must learn it from an experienced person. One must approach a person who is already in the practice. Now, what Prabhupada doesn't translate here is, Tad Vigyanartam, if one's goal is to attain realization of this knowledge, Vigyana, remember I made the difference between Jnana and Vigyana, uh, if that's one's goal, Artam, then it's imperative abhigat, that one go to a guru. Now, the rest of the verse goes, uh, How should one go? It symbolized samatpani with wood in your hands. In other words, menial servant. One has to surrender. Shrotriyam brahmanishtam. And that person must be fixed in having heard from his own spiritual master. Uh, brahmanishtam and fixed in Brahman. In this case, the Supreme Brahman, Krishna. There's a description there. It's from the Upanishads. Uh, the mind is always flying to this and that. But one must practice concentrating the mind always on the form of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, or on the sound of his name. The mind is naturally restless, going hither and thither, but it can rest in the sound vibration of Krishna. One, mu one must thus meditate 
on Paramam Purusham, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual sky, and thus attain Him. The way and the means for ultimate realization, ultimate attainment, are stated in the Bhagavad Gita, and the doors of this knowledge are open for everyone. No one is barred out. All classes of men and women can approach Lord Krishna by thinking of Him, for hearing and thinking of Him are possible for everyone. <laughs> That's interesting that I mentioned that because the next verse Prabhupada quotes, that's all about it. The very next verse. So, uh, as I mentioned last night, you know, because I, I know the history of this, this introduction. And when Prabhupada dictated this, he actually recorded it. Uh, and it was later transcribed and edited. But he recorded it in uh, early 66, probably. Before 26 Second Avenue, he was uptown, living in an office, which was uh, loaned to him by Dr. Mishra, a yoga teacher who was established, you know. So he really had very little going at that time. And uh, so he took the time out. There's a real, big reel-to-reel -reel, uh, tape recorder. You, know, you can imagine, a heavy thing. So someone had loaned that to him or given it to him, and he, was, uh, he used it and to record this. And someone then stole the thing from him, broke into his little office, you know, there, he, and took the, tape, took the tape recorder but left the tape. And so the tape was eventually transcribed into this wonderful introduction. But Prabhupada didn't know what was going to happen. At least he didn't show it, you know. And he said, well, at least there'll be this. And so he's putting everything in here. It's like the whole process, you know. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. And then you can see how he was able to expand on all these themes in his teachings and his books like that. So, uh, Prabhupada, Prabhupada is, you know, there's two things going on. One is that, okay, it's Kali Yuga, it's difficult to control the mind, and how is it possible that we can actually advance in devotional service? But, at the, but then, at the same time, Prabhupada is saying, but it, it is feasible. It's been made feasible by Lord Chaitanya, by this, this easiest process of Sankirtan centered on the chanting of the holy name plus Japa. It's possible to chant in any condition. That's, that's the, a, a big deal that we, don't that we don't recognize so much in the West. But there is these injunctions in India that uh, the, the Shudras, even the Vaishas, they can't chant the Vedas. They're not qualified. Only the Brahmins can chant the Vedas. Right? And, uh, but Lord Chaitanya, he broke that. That was a big thing. He broke that. Now anyone can chant Hare Krishna. And you can become perfect and become great even if you're born in the lowest outcast society. And he exalted, even Rupa and Sanatan had been cast out because they were working for the Muslim king. And his Haridas Taka was born a Muslim, you know, and others, uh, Ibrahmananda Roy, who was Kayasta Sudra, basically. But they were all the, high, he, he, the, the greatest Vaishnavs and got the greatest recognition. So he broke his whole artificial caste business. Uh, and what is the qualification? The uh, guna and karma as Krishna says here, what are your actual qualities and what are your actual activities? And these great souls, by their, by their qualities and activities, show them to be the greatest Vaishnavs. Rupa and Sanatan, who were so uh, courageous in leaving that service. Sanatan had to break out, you know, bribe his way out of jail. And, and Raghunadas, to escape from that net of, uh, of wealth, you know, he was the only son of, like, would be like multi, multi-millionaires today. And they wanted, you know, he had the most beautiful wife. They sent him everything. But he came in touch with Lord, Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, and he didn't have no interest in it anymore. But to get out of that, he had to sneak away and, and walk for 12 days down to Jagannath Puri without hardly eating three days, you know. And he became the, the pinnacle of renunciation from the pinnacle of wealth to the pinnacle of renunciation. And showing the power of bhakti to, to uh, make one so attracted to God to Krishna, that material you can you can uh, be happy with the li littlest possible thing. Rupa and Sanatana were walking around with little loincloths under one different tree every night. They didn't even have their own tree to live under. They had like a different tree and begging here and there. <laughs> Hardly, you know, you have the homeless people here. They're so, you know, it's, it's heart goes out. What can you do? It's sleeping on the... On the but, that, but that's the externals. They were, you know... <laughs> Again, this six Goswami song. Uh, four, number four. Chaktva turna mishesha mandala pati shading sadat tuchavat budva dina ganesha kao kadunayao kopina kuntashrito 
ಗೋಪಿ ಭಾವದ ಸಾಮ ತಾಬ್ದದ ಹಲಿ ಖಲ್ಲೋಳ ಮಗ್ನೋ ಮಹು ಒಂದೇ ರೂಪ ಸನಾತನ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಬೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ಕೋ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ರೂಪ ಸನಾತನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಘುನಾಥ್ ದಾಸ್ Tukhtva Thunam, they quickly, as soon as they became attracted to Lord Chaitanya, they didn't wait around and say, okay, let me get my degree first. No, no. They said, <laughs> immediately, Thunam, Tukhtva, a shesha mandala pati, endless wealth and influence they had, especially Rupa and Sanatana. They were right there, the right and left hand of the king. Uh, they, they gave it all up. Tuchavat, insignificant, useless, you know, worse than useless, a great impediment. So they gave it up quickly. Turna means without, you know, should I or shouldn't I? No. Turna mishesha manda to mishesha. And bhutva dina ganesha go. They, they became, the, the, for the sake of the, of the wretched of the earth, the, us, dina ganesha go, karunaya, out of their compassion, they kopina kantashito. That's symbolic of, of taking, uh, of uh, being, I mean, Goswami, Babaji, Sanyasi. means they put on the cope and you know and the little kanta whatever cloth they could find and that's that that's they're wearing from the from the greatest silks you know with with the ornaments that they were wearing. forget it you know and so what was their consciousness prabhu tells a story of a businessman he, he knew in calcutta who lost everything in the war uh, world war 2 india was involved because britain was there and britain was fighting in world war you know too with germany So this this guy lost everything and he couldn't live. He committed suicide. You know, he's very wealthy. If you're born poor, you somehow we can analyze, oh, that's my life. But if you were rich and then you become poor, it's very difficult. So, but what what did they do? They were at the highest bliss. Gopi Baba the Sarma Tabda the Hali Gopi Magno Moho. Again and again they're diving and, and surfacing in the the ocean of gopi prema for krishna the highest level most intense bliss always it's not that they had a peak experience and then the rest of the day they're just waiting when they can have <laughs> always <laughs> so so what wh- what's the better deal you know and work 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 you know maybe make make some money and then have a little flickering pleasure where you're going to lose the money you know? or chant hari krishna and get it, get it and and be cap- be able to tap into the reservoir of pleasure which is right here you got it in your your heart and and you can always experience it and that's what they showed and they taught us how to do it so we've been given all of it bhagavatam is the essence shravanam kirtanam here's the instruction and rupa goswami showed how to practice all of these in very systematically as bhakti rasamrita sindhu and uh and then no one is barred out so that's that will come up here in uh, the next couple of verses any questions or comments yes go 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 yeah hari krishna so back in the 70s when the movement started yes how hard it was for uh, prabhupad to convince individuals in the west the reason i'm asking cause uh, when we grow up in india it's different you know the culture yeah. we don't ask so many questions we follow the rituals we go to the temple krishna is pretty much in every house right uh-huh. bhagavad gita is pretty much whether they read it or not read it it's in the temple in the house and uh, festivals janmashtami we grew up with this right right but uh, for someone uh, like you for example right it was a new thing yeah so your questions would be different right it would have been different like maybe uh, something which probably took prabhu pat to answer in a different way or give some example so uh-huh. and then he made a lot of devotees here in the west not yeah. just here maybe in europe in australia pretty much everywhere all over, in, the, world. All over the world so what i'm trying to understand is how hard it was for him or how easy was for him to to do something like this well here here's the thing the history is it's good to read prabhu's life they even have a, a a one book version you know it's condensed so you can get a, an idea of what he went through he 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 didn't come to america at first he was trying to fulfill the order of a spiritual master in india he was preaching in english he had his back to god magazine you know and he was distributing it he had the league of devotees in jhansi he was given not given but loaned a building which that which was suitable he was doing a lot of preaching he made a disciple Acharya Prabhakar, he was his fam- first disciple, a sc- Sanskrit scholar and everything. And it was going, and he was hoping that he would actually get p- possession of that, that building and, and do his mission in India. He'd be preaching and, and, and spreading in, in the English language. Uh, but uh, Krishna Ranjit didn't let him do that. <laughs> 
And um, he was still married at that time. Then he went back and he did some business, you know, but that didn't work out. And his, his, his family was uh, not helping him with his preaching. And eventually he, he left and took sannyas. First Vana Prasad yeah. But the point was, is that when he was trying to preach in India, he had, we know, we know Krishna already, you know, it's not yeah. something new, you know. <laughs> my parent, my grandmother taught me, you know. And uh, <laughs> so he said, let me, let me try, if I'm going to fail, let me fail. Like the whole thing of let me hunt a rhinoceros, you know. If you go out to get a rhinoceros, well, if you fail, well, it's, it was a rhinoceros after all, and, you know. So, <laughs> but if you succeed, oh, everyone will be amazing. So it's a, it's a win-win situation. Anyway, so he, started, he started to, decided to do the impossible, to go to America with no money and no friends and, and try to spread Krishna kindness. So he, comes, he gets off the boat and he writes this wonderful poem. He says, so, you've somehow, some, for some reason you brought me to this horrible place. He's looking at the, the, the skyline in Boston, you know, the city skyline. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, you brought me for a reason. So if you want, you make my, uh, my speaking power suitable to convince them. You know, I'm a puppet in your hands, so if you want me to dance, make me dance, make me dance as you like. It's a famous line from that poem. It's a wonderful poem. And uh, then he came down to New York. First they stopped in Boston, you know. And so it was just, he was in the hands of Krishna. You know, he didn't know which way to go, left or right. But, there was, but his, his, his uh, sponsor had sent a traveler's aide. They had this, this who would come and met him there and put him on, got him on the right bus so he would get off in there. And so he stayed for a few weeks. But then he came back to New York. And he somehow contacted this mission. And I, I told you, that, you know, this. So, so the, the point was, when he came down to uh, the Lower East Side, which I, I was visiting there. I grew up in New York and knew all that. And, that. and it was right in the middle of the hippie days, you know, when there was all of this ferment and questioning. And yeah, the LSD, it like shook people up, you know, uh, uh, questioning, is there a God? You know, I mean, there was some going on. There, people were reading all kinds of things. So he found a, an audience there people who were uh, ready to hear him and try the chanting of Hare Krishna. It wasn't that, oh yeah, you know, I know Hare Krishna. No, they didn't know. It was something new. And you know, right there was Mukunda, who was a skilled musician, and uh, you know, others, when he went to the West Coast, Shaima Sundar. These are competent people. They had degrees in college, you know, but they were searching too. So it was, it was Krishna's arrangement that brought him just in the right place, just in the right time, so there would be a receptive audience and some of whom would be ready to take it on full time. This was the thing. In India, you have, you know, he got some response, he sold some books, but everyone had their own thing going on. Mm. But in America, you had this incredible uh, situation where there were a lot of uh, competent, intelligent people who were searching for something else besides materialism. And uh, the fortunate few came in touch with Parabhat and started the process. They became the, the shock troops, the, the, the first, you know. So, so it, was, it was difficult at first, uh, but Prabhupada had then, you know, his book production team. That was very important. And so he was able to publish these books. And uh, book distribution, and it, out of, you know, it, it ultimately comes down to love. Because Prabhupada was, was giving of himself so much, and he was giving the process by which he could be transformed. Anyone who takes it the process of chanting is going to feel something, you know. And so uh, the, the, the reciprocal, oh, Prabhupada has saved us. And, and people were ready to do anything. To go alone to Germany and start the, the first center. And you know, I knew the devotee who did that. Or one devotee in Laguna Beach, who uh, he started in South Africa. And he, he went with another devotee to preach in South Africa. He was 18 years old, you know, and the two of them were working. The first, one was an older sannyasi. But the other guy left and just left him there. You know, 18 years old. He had some books, you know. But he somehow contacted some Indians there and, you know, he was able to keep it going, you know, to some other. So all of these things were empowered by Prabhupada because of his, rela what he did, his sa obvious sacrifice and his obvious, uh, you know, what he was giving was genuine, if you take it seriously. So the answer is that, uh, yes, at first it was di difficult, of course, but he had a better, m more fertile field in America than he had in India. But then when he went back to India with the dancing white elephants, he caused a tremendous sensation. He had, you know, it, this is 1970, it was, and he had uh, the Delhi Pandal. He had thousands of people coming to listen and mostly to see the dancing white elephants. These are people, <laughs> the Westerners, you know, dancing with the genuine ecstasy. So that made a big impression. The whole thing, Krishna arranged, you know. Okay, it's time. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Haribo.